Loki Season 2, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called Heart of the TVA. Spoilers for everything MCU. The, uh, another episode I love, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So yes, the, the secret that Miss Minutes had to, to tell uh, Re Renslayer was indeed the the fact that she used to work you know with Kang and you know yeah that does of course help motivate and yeah you know she she led the armies so not not some small thing and uh, yeah, the, the you know he he called for Miss Minutes to erase the memories of you know everyone who works at the TVA. So that was when that happened, as soon as the the war was over. And now she also has confirmation that all of them had their memories erased. And that's of course that's the thing that changes things. Uh, you know, it's one thing. You know, if you if you think that you are upholding something important you might be willing to do bad things to other people if you if you are convinced this is what's right but finding out for sure that you yourself has had awful things done to you that changes things and yeah you know miss minutes point out, points out we don't need him maybe we never did and yeah, um, I like Victor at the at the TVA. Just you know, honestly, I I you know when when that scene started, I wasn't entirely sure. I figured probably not, but I wasn't entirely sure that it wouldn't just be like an entire episode of Victor just bumbling around the TVA and just like trying to figure out what's going on. Which I don't know. I would have loved, you know, that would have been amazing. Um, maybe there's some deleted scenes or something, but yeah, it was it was very fun. Just him going around, you know, marveling at the the kings on the wall and the the timekeepers and everything. Let's see, and yeah, the you know, I I appreciate that you know he points out. You want me, you want me, you want me dead. Should I not have a say in the matter? You know. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, he he says, Is is that my is is that my you know, and you know, suddenly Idris Elba pops in and goes, That's your loom. And yeah, I appreciate the, the, you know, they're trying to figure out if, I uh, think, Docs, if General Docs could be swayed with words, you know, and it is this thing of, you know, when you take down fascists, a fascist regime, you know, some of the people who worked in high positions you know, if you can convince them that, you know, not, not to try to, you know, do fascism again, you know, maybe they, they could still be extremely useful. You know, they, they, you know, depends on, you know, sometimes under fascism, some people get promoted that have no idea what they're doing. But, yeah, in some cases, and, and this was the, you know, in, in Nazi Germany, after, World War II ended, some people did just keep working and, you know, today, not, yeah. <laughs> I swear that was not a Freudian slip. Today, Germany is not Nazi, you know, ugh. I mean, they have, the government is not a Nazi government. The, they do, unfortunately, as many countries here in the West do, have some neo-Nazis, you know, but... Yeah, so I, I appreciate the, the show bringing that up. You know, it's there, there's a lot of American media that kind of just says, you know, as soon as we get rid of the bad ruler, 
that's it. You know, if Press Start even did a joke about it way back in 2007, you know, okay, that's not that long ago, but even so, you know, yeah, there's a lot of American media, and you know, that one it was specifically about video games, but there's a lot of American media that basically says, as soon as we get rid of the ruler, everything will be great. And it's like, I mean, there's still some, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure that someone does take over control of that. You just need it to be someone who's gonna do it, you know, ethically. And <clears throat> it's very, the, the bromance, as Sylvie puts it, between Victor and Obi is very, very sweet. And I do appreciate this thing of, yeah, you know, Ob wrote the book, which ended up with Victor Timely. Victor Timely wrote the book, which ended up, you know, inspiring Ob. So it is this, it is a time loop, as you know, it has been. I forget who, but someone here on YouTube suggested that it might. The entire season, they they've theorized the entire season is a time loop, and we did now see it was indeed Loki who pruned himself as his future ver future past version you know so so yeah i i quite appreciate this because and that is also that is a um paradox you run into with a lot of time travel stories you know if you travel back in time and do a thing you know is yeah you know some stories say no you're just you're changing the future, you know, you're changing time, maybe creating a new timeline, new part of the multiverse. But some stories say, no, it always happened that way. And yeah, at that point, it's like, well, how how did it happen before the time travel? Now, let's see, adorable when Ob is like, you know, okay, so I know it's not a perfect model. They don't really. These the, the figures don't quite look like us, and and there's only one cut of paint. I'm sorry, I didn't have enough time. Just yeah, does does feel a lot like you know I've, I've mentioned earlier in, in other videos on the show. You know, he feels like he's he's very coded as being on the spectrum, and yeah, that's you know like dude, it's an incredible model. To, you know, and also like you didn't need to build an entire model to illustrate it. You know, but yeah, you know, he's, yeah, let's see, and, and yeah, I, I forget if I've said it before, but I really appreciate that he's allowed to be so capable, because that is something, a lot of people who've never interacted with, uh, you know, someone who, a, an, an HFA at the very least, uh, you know, they might not realize some HFAs are, you know, yeah, incredibly capable within the thing that they're really, really good at. You know, some some people think that, oh, you know, if you're on the spectrum, you know, you must not be able to do anything. So I really appreciate stories that fight back against that. You know, I, I don't like stereotypes in general, but I hate the ones that aren't even true. <clears throat> And, yeah, right, I, I love when, you know, Obi is like, someone killed He Who Remains and ruined my life, you know, and it cuts to, to, to Sylvie and she's like, that was me, who has two thumbs and kills kings, that's me, you bet your ass I did, I'll kill this one if you give me a second, you know, just, I, I really, you know, it's, it's much more fun than if she was just like, yeah, that was my bad. Sorry, that could also have been funny, but I really appreciate it. just uh, yeah. <laughs> I like them bickering about like it's in in general. You know, it's a it's always a lot of fun when Mobius and Loki bicker. But you know, the thing with well, you know, I went last. Yeah, you know, I was the one who went last time. Should be you. I just I don't I don't think it's me. It doesn't it doesn't really look like me. And Sylvie's like. It has a helmet on. It doesn't look like anybody. And yeah, I, I quite appreciate that Victor is able to help with the the machine. You know, there's this thing of they're trying to figure out the machine, and you know, struggling. And Victor's like, 
I have an idea, you know. I struggled with that until I invented the this thing, you know. And... Right. Um, I really liked Sylvie's, you know, Moby's like, let's go get some pie. And Sylvie, I guess that's the one thing she doesn't love about McDonald's, or maybe she's just partial to McDonald's pies, because she lets him have it. She is thoroughly, just viciously anti-pie. And yeah, it's a great monologue. You know, really glad to, to see Sylvie, you know, there was a lot of really great stuff with her in season one as well. But but just, yeah, fantastic, you know, and, and she ends it by saying, enjoy your pie, which is so sweet. I, I, here I was thinking that she had a problem with him eating pies, but, but yeah, you know, she points out, you haven't even looked to you. Timelines are still just lines on a monitor. You don't even care about the people. You know, you haven't tried empathizing with them. Like, ideally, you'd want him to be able to care without having looked at his... But, yeah, you know, for a number of people, they, empathy begins with them imagining themselves in that situation. Let's see, and... Yeah, um... The... the yes. Yeah. Sylvie ends up in the pie room, in, in pie land. And, uh, you know, yeah, she and, and Loki talk about, you know, she did she chose not to kill Victor. And, uh, you know, she points out there's a lot of hope in here, Loki, and I do not think we are in Star Wars. And, you know, he, he points out, you know, you, you can't just give someone free will, you know, and, and then just walk away. You know, and that's again, that's another, you know, there there have been attempts at like saying, you know, let's bring democracy to this people when the people themselves weren't like asking for it. Like, you know, it, I can appreciate that it's a, at least hypothetically, it is a, a noble cause, you know, not, not the way America does it, but it, hypothetically, it could be. You know, but you can't give democracy to someone who isn't looking to, to you know, and, and yeah, appreciate that this is addressed and, let's see, yeah, and, and Ravona shows up inside the, the jail cell and I like, you know, Doc's like shames Miss Minutes, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm working on myself." <laughs> I really appreciate that. You know, it's it's important to to hold yourself accountable. Just yeah, you know. and yeah, you know, they they talk Brad into, you know, going with them, which. You know, I, I honestly, I thought, oh, by the end of the scene, Ravona is going to have an army to command again, you know, which, like, last time she had an army to command, she helped win, I guess she did win, the, the you know, the multiversal war, which, you know, in case you've forgotten, that was against other Kangs, you know, time-traveling, genocidal, super-powered Kangs, she won that war... And now she might get another one. So that's not some small thing. But Brad is the only one who who joins. And yeah, they use the, the cube on the rest of them. Holy crap, Miss Minutes just loves this. Yeah, she's like, oh, best moment of my life. You know, the eyes get really big. and <laughs> She is terrifying, I guess. I guess based on the later in this episode, it's possible we won't see her more, and they wanted to, to give her a really like memorable final little. She wasn't always this sadistic though, so that's that's a thing. And you know, yeah, I, I appreciate you know Doc's always you know great with the with the biting comments. You know the the it's really really. <laughs> You know, now, now we understand why, you know, 
her daughter Laura in Matriarch felt that she was such a, you know, just, holy crap. Um, but yeah, you know, she, she, as she's dying, she says, how does it feel knowing that we'd rather die than follow you? And I also like the, the detail that, you know, Brad, not loving it, um, Renslayer herself, yeah, she's, like, she, she considers it necessary, but she's not enjoying killing all these people. You know, there's a, there's a lot of American media where the villain is just, you know, Saturday morning cartoon villain, kind of just loves killing people, hurting people. I, I like villains that have, you know, some of those are a lot of fun, to be clear. But I, I quite like when they are more, like, complex than, than that. I quite enjoyed Victor, like, once he hears hot cocoa machine you know it, it starts with him seeing the cup he's like what is that and ah oh, this just little pick me up from the hot cocoa machine hot cocoa machine and just he he you know he does not relent until he is in front of it and and holding a, a cup yeah, and and we see that the the time the temp, temp pads are not working, and at one point Miss Minutes is on the little screen going. Uh, uh, uh. I guess someone didn't say the magic word. I mean, we already knew the you know un, until this point Miss Minutes has mostly been based on. I want to say he's called Mister DNA. I have not watched that movie in ages, but yeah, they're they're broadening into some other, you know. Jurassic Park 1 references, so that's, yeah, and, let's see, I have to admit, the moment that Hunter D90 was pruned, like, right, you know, he, he gets the cup, takes a sip, and he's like, hmm, that's, that's not bad, for a second there, I was like, holy crap, what did Victor put in that cocoa when he's like, disappearing but no it's it's Brad right behind him you know drops the, drops the cup must be my lucky day I cannot be the only person who flashed back to that movie Let's see and um, hold on what is the yeah yeah uh, I like when when Victor you know sat in front of the <laughs> in front of Renslayer and Miss Minutes, and he's like, thank God you're both okay. You know, that the, the look on his face, that is the look of a man who just got found out. You know, he, he's like, you know, he was, he was hoping to keep his side piece hidden, and suddenly, you know, his, his wife or girlfriend is right there, she knows, and he's like, what? How do I, hmm... What would be the best uh, damage control? Let's see. <clears throat> and I swear I'm not just saying that because uh, he and Ramon are black. It's Cheating is sadly... It goes across all ethnicities. And... <laughs> right, and, and the, you know, the, there's the line about, you know, if you don't... You know, what if you what if you don't like what I have to say? Then we will find the most painful way to kill you. It's a small box. You're gonna like what I have to say. So Brad, despite being tortured with the box earlier, now like fully embraces. You know, he he's not like oh, not the box. He's like, oh, I'm gonna you know. So yeah, the and that is sadly some people you know. Hurt people hurt people. Some people do go out and, you know, do really cruel things in response to, to cruelty done to them. You know, ideally, you go the exact uh, opposite direction and say, no one should ever have to be subjected to this. And, let's see. Yeah, we, we see 
Loki from from episode one and see that it is the other Loki pruning him. And I appreciate that they weren't, like, trying to play coy about this. I mean, the moment that she, Sylvie, got into the elevator, which was acting up, and we know that stuff is, like, collapsing in the TVA, and then we see Loki have to take another path in the elevator, like, at that point we're like, I see where this is going, uh, you know, so... Uh, we might not have guessed, oh, it must have been Loki pruning himself, but it's like, okay, this is this is when Loki was, because Sylvie is right there, and she's like, there you are, you know, and and her clothes fit the, the scene, so, yeah. And, let's see... Yeah, and after pruning his his other self, Loki's like, I promise this makes sense, you know. And someone finally answers that frickin' phone. It's like, okay, we get it. You, look, I love Once Upon a Time in America too. We don't need a phone ringing for forever. And, let's see, yeah, and the... <laughs> You know, it's it's Ob on the phone, and he says, you know, I mean, if I turn off that thing, people are going to be able to use magic, <laughs> and he doesn't realize, you know, because because he's so used to this very, you know, in inside the box thinking, and that is, you know, that is something that a number of autistic people, you know, that can can struggle with with you know thinking outside of the the yeah so so yeah you know obviously it would be good for them to be able to use magic and let's see right i appreciate the the panic miss minutes expresses you know she says i'm losing cognitive function you know, and, and just, yeah, like, you know, the, she really does, she, she knows what it's like to, to have an, I, like, an identity and a, and a mind, and she's terrified of losing it, and that's, yeah, very, very nicely done, and, you know, the, the, and, you know, she says, Victor, I have to tell you, you'll never be him. And you know, at the at the very very end, right before she completely disappears, she literally is just a a, a talking clock. You know, which the the you might think is the answer to the riddle. You know what? Crap! I don't remember Simpsons reference. I it's been too long since I watched that episode. What has? Legs and ticks, or something like that. Anyway, but but yeah, um, the the yeah, and then the the um, let's see, yeah, you know, uh, Brad is like, let's go for a rematch, and or wait, no, or it, I think it was Loki saying it to Brad, you know, and Sylvie manages to use her her magic on him. And I really, like, uh, Raphael Casal, fantastic job. Like, you, it's wild that Renslayer doesn't, re well, yeah, no, she's been so used to, for all the time she's worked there, no one has been able to use magic there. She, you know, she does say, what's, you know, what's going on? Why are you being weird? You know, and just the way he's walking, you know, you can tell Sylvie is, is, Control. It's it's like in season one when they went to that time that Sylvie was hiding, and she controlled various people and attacked Loki using them. You know, and Brad even says, or Sylvie says through Brad, "I didn't think I'd see you again so soon." <laughs> Prunes her, and see. yeah, and and you know. They they try to try to, to open the door, you know. So they they have, you know, Victor's head pushed inside the the thing. They're like, you know, theoretically this should work. This should open the door. Like, I 
feel like there's a vagina, vagina dentata joke in there. But I'm not going to make it because I'm classier than that for once. But yeah, the, the you know, opens the door. Talk about opening the door. And the, the you know, he, he goes out and it's like, okay, this is it. You know, they're going to be... But he, you know, gets pulled apart. And yeah, you know, the, temp the temporal radiation is too damn high. And we end on a cliffhanger as the, the you know, because it's this thing of, I mean, hypothetically, it's not impossible that the windows could block even that intense amount of radiation and they might have enough time to get away from there. Though I'm not sure how the TVA is, itself is going to survive, which I think is also the, the let's see, there was this video... By, I haven't watched it yet, but Cinema Blend did a video called Is the TVA Gone? Which I guess they were hoping that everyone had already watched the episode. I hadn't, but I tried not to think about what that might mean. But yeah, um, really, really excited to see what happens next. Um, and I... Let's see, I think that might be everything that I have to say about this episode um, right uh, I knew there was something let's see the um, oh, no, right never mind anyway yes um, the the um, I'm not saying it's like a plot hole it's probably just something I missed I am not 100% sure how they were able to get back, how, how Ravona, I mean, I, I guess Miss Minutes can travel back and forth between the end of time and the, the TVA just however she pleases. I, yeah, you know, sudden, suddenly a time door opens. Ravona is able to, to return to the, the TVA when, you know, I, I, I guess it's possible that she just had a tempad on her. Right, because that was, that was how, um, that was how Mobius was able to return in season one. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. Yeah, um, we are more than halfway through there's two episodes left we're two-thirds of the way through so yeah very excited uh, I kind of hope that this season will resolve the overall Loki story I don't mind like these characters showing up elsewhere I, I don't know if I think that this is the kind of thing that you can just keep going and going or at the very least, I think a, a third season would have to be very, very different. You know, there, there are some ways that season two is very different from season one, but I don't know. I, I am really enjoying it. But, yeah, that is it for this one. So, catch you again next week. And until then, if someone confronts you about killing a dictator and ruining their life, you know, don't, don't despair. Just, you know, be, hold your head up high. That's, yeah. And make my marvel.